Hey everyone, it's Michael Zupan with Bite Size Impressions, and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about Battlefield 1. Um, you know, it, it's funny, my relationship with this game emotionally over the past year has been something of a roller coaster, not even the last year, ever since E3, you know, when they first unveiled the game. EA obviously decided to do their own thing on Sunday before everyone else, you know. And they got out there and they showed off this game and I was like, holy shit, this looks like fun. And, you know, I was prepared for a game like this. I was ready for it because this style of gameplay uh, has been absent for years at this point. And uh, you're like, well, we, we've got a war game every year, you know, with Call of Duty and Battlefield's been coming out with games. Yeah, sure. That's all well and good, but... We haven't had a World War-type setting in a very long time. I mean, just think about it. Just Call of Duty alone. If you want to think back, Call of Duty came out. Call of Duty 2. Call of Duty 2 was like a launch title on the 360, and um, I remember that. I love that game. It was really good, and it's still a really good, intense game. Um, it's, it was one of those first war games that really wowed me with its gameplay because they really did force you to sort of be careful with your shots and sticking your head up and everything like because there was so much shit going on around you at all times but I haven't felt that sort of excitement that craziness in a war game there's been a lot of impressive things over the years sure lots of cool set pieces and everything but nothing that's actually kind of driven home the craziness of war like Call of, war, uh, Call of Duty 2 did um, there was World at War Call of Duty 3 but then after that there was Modern Warfare 1, 2, and 3. There was Call of Duty Ghosts. There's been uh, Black Ops 1, 2, and 3. Advanced Warfare, now Infinite Warfare. And each one of those games is a year that they've taken off from a World War style of game. And it's really been about that long since we've had this sort of stage for war. And, you know, n now that we've progressed so much further in the last, how, how many games is that? Like nine games or something in the last like eight or nine years, like the technology, you can just see based on the gameplay footage that I'm showing you, there's tear gas, there's smoke, there's fire, there's mud and fire that's flying around from explosions around you at all times. I mean, it's just the technology is here and they're able to take advantage of it. And the game, with their Frostbite engine, looks really, really good and actually performs well for the most part. They do have some bugs that they're going to have to uh, work out, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Right now, I want to talk about uh, what you're seeing right now um, is their new... Uh, their, their new mode. God, is it called Operations? Yeah, it's called Operations. Basically, in operations, like, you know, old school battle, uh, battlefield mode was conquest. And you would have, like, four, five, six, maybe seven points on a map that, you know, your half had to basically procure and stay in uh, control of. And the longer that you had points in your control, the more points that you racked up. And then, you know, the first team, whoever reached, you know, however many points would win at the at the end of the day. Of course, if you had a majority of the maps, uh, of the points on the map, at any given time, you know, your points would be racking up faster than the other team. So it was always a constant tug of war. Uh, that is the classic Battlefield mode that everybody is really excited to play in multiplayer. However, what Operations is doing this time is that instead of making it like a map by map sort of thing, they have one huge, huge map that's actually uh, kind of fractioned off into different pieces. And uh, you work your way across the map. So you're going to be given like two or three different uh, locations on a map that you have to secure, like you're seeing here in the video right now. And uh, once you do, then you can move on to the next couple of points. And then once you secure those, you move on to the next couple of points until you push the enemy so far back that that stage is over. Now, the other team, they have a chance to come back. And, you know, if they're really getting their ass handed to them, eventually, you know, the blimp gets called in. So they do have a little bit of reinforcement and things get a little bit tougher as time goes on. Uh, so this mode is actually, it's really, really, really fun. 
Um, but this is where the performance of the game actually seems to suffer the most because it's so, I guess, ambitious for level size, I guess, compared to some of the other stuff, like in the, re in the regular conquest mode. For some reason, this game is very, very, very CPU intensive and DICE know about this. Uh, they just released the patch today, November 15th. Uh, at the time that I'm recording this, that is, uh, they have released a patch to basically work out some of those CPU kinks because even people with like really high end CPUs are noticing that their CPU is being like maxed out at a hundred percent and they're experiencing frame drops on their rigs as a result of this. Also people on the Xbox one and the PS four. They've been complaining of this sort of thing too, but this really only seems to affect certain maps uh, in the 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 new uh, gameplay mode, especially if you're dealing with 64 players. Uh, if you're dealing with 40 players, it's a little bit better, but if you're doing the 64 player uh, operations mode, it is it, it it can be very very hitchy um and it can you know like my frames per second they were going up and down from like 40 to 80 frames per second and it wasn't like you know the transition was slow it was up and down and up and down and up and down and the numbers moved up and down so fast that i just couldn't even tell you what number uh frames per second i was even looking at they they were moving that fast the game was very sort of unstable in that respect it was still playable it was hitchy, but it was still playable. But now that this patch has come out and they've worked on the CPU optimization a little bit, um, I'm not really having a problem anymore. So I'm actually, it's still very CPU intensive. I have an i7 4790K. It's a four gigahertz thing. Uh, as an i7, it's got four cores, eight threads. And uh, I downloaded Afterburner. I've been monitoring the usage very carefully. And uh, I think before, Battlefield 1 was only running, I think for most people, four of their threads if they had eight. Now it's running all eight, but like the CPU usage, it's still really high. Like some maps, I'm still getting like, you know, 80, 85 is my top end. Some maps only kind of go between 50 and 60% of the CPU. So it, it's still very hungry. Uh, there are people out there who are noticing actually worse performance with this patch, uh, which does seem a little bit concerning. Um, there, so there's a lot of confusion out there right now. Whatever DICE have done, it doesn't seem to have resolved everyone's problem, but uh, it's still very early on, and, and this is sort of the nature of the beast when you're dealing with their multiplayer-only sort of games. And I guess I shouldn't say that anymore because, you know, with Battlefield 4, DICE actually came out with a single-player campaign and, um, you know, it was all right. But they included one in this game, too, and it's actually really, really good. Uh, there's some questionable design decisions that don't really hamper the experience for me that, you know, uh, destroy the experience or my enjoyment of it. It looks great. It's chaotic. You know, you get to do the tank thing. You get to uh, be on the ground and all the craziness, you know, while you're stomping boots and shooting things, of course. Um, you get to fly planes and everything. So you get a little bit of taste, uh, a little bit of a taste for everything that you're actually going to be doing in multiplayer. So it kind of acts like a tutorial, I suppose, without, without actually being one. Um, but they actually put a lot of care into the uh, people that you're playing as, you know, it, it's actually, you know, very emotional at times, uh, very uh, kind of patriotic sort of feeling. I mean, they did a great job with the characters and presenting the story. So uh, the campaign is actually worth playing through. Uh, to my understanding, you're, you're still looking at only about a five to six hour campaign tops. But, uh, you know, that's not where most people are going to be spending their time on this game. Truth be told, right? So, uh, yeah, I, I would recommend that. But the thing that is actually kind of odd about the single player for me is that they keep throwing in these stealth sections. Like, you're looking at me right now play multiplayer, and there ain't no stealth involved. I'm running, I'm shooting, I'm trying to capture the objectives. In the single player campaign, like, you might be escorting a tank, and they might be like, okay, listen... 
There's something around the ridge over there. Why don't you sneak over there and uh, spot what the situation is like and uh, either take care of it or come back to us or whatever. And, like, you're sneaking around. I mean, it's not terrible, you know. It's uh, it's not... It doesn't feel completely useless, but it doesn't really feel like the sort of style of gameplay that people come to expect when they're playing a Battlefield game. They want the craziness. They want the fast-paced action, you know. So uh, I think a bit more of that, you know. I I'm glad that they didn't try and just play it safe by doing that because that's what every war game seems to do. And I'm glad that they, they 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 were trying to differentiate themselves a little bit instead of just doing another Call of Duty game, you know. But um, I don't know. I, I think they could have done it and got, gotten away with it, you know, with the story and the characters that they were presenting. Um, and, and again, this is the first time in a very long time that we've had a World War type setting in a game anyway. So this is very welcome anyway. Um yeah, you know, I don't really know what else to say about this game. I mean, the multiplayer is absolutely fantastic. What I really wanted to get into at this point uh, was Titanfall 2 before anything else. You know, that's the one game that I was excited about more than anything. And I have that game and I, you know, on a whim, I was like, well, I'm going to try this. And I have not been able to pry myself away from this experience at all. You know, even as I sit here and I'm watching this gameplay footage and I'm talking to you about this game, all I want to do is really go play more. I mean, God, I wish I could take a, a day off, a, you know, a solid day off from work and, and just sit here and play this game. The time would fly by like nothing. I can't do that, though. I got a baby coming in March, and uh, I can't be just using days like that. Otherwise, I totally would. Um... I mean, I, I do want to get in the Titanfall 2 at some point, but I've heard from a lot of people that it's, you know, a really amazing game and actually probably a lot more fun to play than games like Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. So I figured I'll tackle these games first. Problem is, I'm enjoying this one too much to uh, get away from it. So uh, if you like what you see and if you like Battlefield games in general, I think this is way better than Battlefield 4. For sure. There's a lot of people that are, you know, if you if you look on the uh, Battlefield 1 Reddit, there's a lot of people who echo the same sentiment. People who are fans of the franchise in general and even love Battlefield 4, and they're like, nope, this is more fun. Uh, the one thing that kind of sucks, though, is that you can play a long time in multiplayer and you get these battle packs. And the battle packs unlock new weapons for you to be able to use, of course, and I guess you're going to be able to buy those battle packs and they're... You know, that typical slot machine bullshit. So that's really discouraging. And, of course, another thing, too, is that if you want to rent surfers for this game, it's like 120-some-odd days or something like that for 100 bucks, which is, wow. I mean, you know... Or, or do I have those numbers backwards? I don't really know what the exact numbers are. All I know is that... You know, renting servers directly from EA for this game, it's expensive. And, uh, you know, they won't allow you the option to just have your own. You have to rent servers if you want something private, which is a bit of a bummer. You know, it's if they're not going to get your money in microtransactions, they're going to get it some other way. You know, uh, there's also, you know, obviously a season pass. There's going to be, you know, DLC, I think four rounds of DLC that are going to be coming out, you know, of like maps and stuff like that, not just cosmetic shit. So uh, I have to look into that because I'm actually enjoying this game enough that I might actually consider that. But I have to wait and see specifically what they're going to be offering. I don't want to get stuck just buying a bunch of fucking skins and weapons and stuff, you know. Uh, but there's plenty of time to see what's going to be coming up with the DLC and everything like that. I'm not one to just... I oh, I rarely ever buy DLC. But this game is so goddamn fun. I think I just might have to. Anyway, that's enough about this game for now. Um, I wholeheartedly recommend this game. It's a fantastic experience. I just really hope that uh, it's not like another month before the, no the next patch. And that EA and DICE are actually able to continue to optimize this game for people who are kind of bummed out by frame losses on the PS4 and the Xbox One versions of the game. As well as people who 
want to experience this smoothly on the PC, but can't because, you know, their, their, their mid-range CPUs are getting tapped the fuck out. So I don't know what that's all about, but hopefully they correct that in the not-too-distant future. Uh, I'm going to stop babbling now because I'm just going to start repeating myself over and over. So until next time, everyone, hopefully I'll have another video for you soon, maybe about Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, uh, maybe something else. We'll see, but uh, I plan to do these impression-type videos, as I said earlier this year, for any of the uh, notable games that I've been playing. And since we're here at the end of 2016... Uh, What's more notable than the trio of Battlefield 1, Titanfall 2, and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare? So make sure you stay tuned to BitesizeImpressions.com for that stuff. Have a good one, everybody.